Hey everyone, here we go. Another week of Brian's Bible study. I thank you for being with me one more time. I thank you for uh, uh, downloading the, the, this video. I appreciate it. I just want to encourage you if if, if you would uh, follow me on uh, YouTube, like the video, share with, with uh, someone you, you love, or and for further appreciation, I, I even put my, my cash app information on, on this video. So, uh, I just, there's various ways to, to show love. I just greatly appreciate you all because, I, you know, I'm here by, by myself when, when I do these videos, of course, because I, I, I live alone. However, I, I in my spirit, I feel like I'm speaking to the entire world. I mean, just week in, week out, just just crushing it like, yo, how can somebody who's by himself get so much joy talking, you know? And and, and I mean, I'm telling you, the, the Lord just really puts that stuff in your spirit, man. He really does. It's him. It's not me. It's it's all him. Okay, so uh, y'all know how we do. We, we start off with, with prayer. So, so, so join with me. Uh, just briefly with, in prayer, dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for, for our dear sister and our, our dear brother who take just a moment out, out of their, their, their day to, to, to listen to listen to, to the foolishness of, of teaching, O oh God. But Lord, we ask you, Lord, that, that, that your wisdom to, to continue to confound the world, O oh, oh God, that, that, that they may, may know there is something greater that is happening. There is there, there, there is a God. There, there's a higher being that's more involved in, in, in than what anyone is telling us. Lord, we, we, we thank you and, and we worship you, Father. We ask you, Father, to, to break this bread of knowledge upon us one, one more time, Father. Father, to bless the listener, not for them to understand, but just for the for the sheer exposure. Lord, we thank you for them, Lord. We thank you, oh God. I, I ask you, Lord, to, to speak through me, Lord, to, with, 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 with an accuracy of thought and, and nimbleness of mind, Lord, and, and, and just allow everyone to hear and hear you and not me, Father. We dare, we, 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 we uh, we greatly appreciate how you bring us together week in and week out, Father. We thank you and we bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Okay, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Brian's Bible study for another week. Last week was off the chain. <laughs> last week was off the chain. We we did in-game last week. I know y'all y'all not used to hearing about the, the the end of the world prophecies but uh you're you know how often do you hear it you know so yeah it's it, it's nice to be given a heads up on certain things <laughs> amen okay here, here here we are in matthew's chapter, chapter 25 and this one i i named uh kingdom segregation Kingdom segregation. It's two words that that's not even that, that it, it's it's actually an oxymoron. But th this will make more more sense as we go on. Okay, starting in, in verse one, and then shall in Matthew chapter chapter twenty five, starting in verse one, and then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took lamps and went forth to meet the the bridegroom, and five of them were wise and five were foolish. So here, here we are. Jesus is teaching another parable. And notice how it's 10 of, of the same group. The only difference of the, the 10 is their approach to life. So we are the kingdom of God is likened unto 10 virgins. So he is specifically talking about saved people we we are so used we're, we're so used to hearing about the saved and the unsaved and and, and then and then that elitist re religiosity comes out of us oh yeah the unsaved it's like, look 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 you was a part of that group too and when nobody looking you you you're still a part of that group when uh, nobody looking okay so he is identifying a specific group, the ten virgins, who are from a, who have a similar demographic. The only separation of this demographic is their approach to life. 
In verse 2 he says, And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. In verse 3, That they that were foolish took their lamps, and took no oil with them to trim their, their, their lamps. In verse 4, But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So, we all, we we already understand how Jesus has a great admiration for people who take who takes their future in consideration. They take their future, okay. It, it, one of my favorite parables is when Jesus tells the story about the uh, un, unfaithful accountant, the untrustworthy uh, accountant. Jesus gave him great uh, a huge shout out. Not because of what he did, because of how he thought. God appreciates those who are visionaries. Because <laughs> visionaries have a different approach to, to their life. Just a, a totally different approach. In verse 5, it says, And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and, and slept. We have another parable that is similar to the bridegroom parable where there is no emphasis on the bride the bridegroom and those serving but not the, the bride so Jesus is trying to give his his uh, disciples at, at, at this time a consciousness of the importance of who Jesus is Jesus has just turned his back please, please watch us that, that, that video uh, farewell <laughs> Amen. Jesus says farewell to uh, the, the the church and, and their tra traditions. So here, here we are. Jesus is is bringing up a consciousness to them about um uh, uh visionaries, referring to the the wise virgins, because people who see their future and have it planned out totally operates their life totally different from those who don't amen amen jesus was a visionary he was a visionary jesus did, didn't waste time if jesus took a day to relax it was fine because he planned to do it he planned to to do it okay it, it, it's all right to uh, relax but don't relax when it's time to work okay don't relax when you know when you know you got pressing stuff to do and people are counting on you. Amen. In verse 6 it says, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, come ye out to meet him. And those then all those virgins arose and trimmed their, their, their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps have got gone out. But, but, but the wise answered, saying, Not so. Let, let us there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather that sell and buy for your uh, uh, selves. So, so, so there is an economy. There is a system already in place for you to solve this problem. Go unto them, to those who buy and sell. Okay, there, there is a pocket e economy for for you to uh, address this uh, problem. Uh, the uh, Godfather T T D Jakes. I I I. Uh, he's uh talking about the woman caught in a adultery, and he gets to the point where, where, where he tells people how important it is to come to church. Mama, get your sons out of bed to come to church. Because the mamas who don't get their sons out of bed to come to church, they end up getting out of bed to do other things. Now, when they get in trouble, don't come to him asking the, the bishop for a letter to give to the uh, police station a letter of right recommendation. Because he's saying, why do you want, want me to write a letter who, for a person I don't know? Because they don't come to church. Okay? So, listen... There's a way to deal with things, okay? You got you have to be submitted to something. You have you have to you have to be submitted to your local church. You have to. There is a pocket e economy on how, how how we get these types of things done, okay? The church uh, ideally prepares you for the the uh, future. 
okay? Things you have to think, think about that, that you weren't necessarily thinking about before. Not just heaven. <laughs> There's a whole lot of life before you get to heaven, okay? And, and, and the church is supposed to put a focus on that. Amen. In verse 10, it says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went out and with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterwards came also the, the other verse saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. I know you not. Why would he say that? Jesus, the God has, has put all of us in certain positions in life. Certain, not, not, not all, but certain positions in life. He expects us to uh, obey and to um, uh, carry out you know the 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 duration until until he tells you otherwise okay fine when you're out of position and then his main purpose is executed and then you come up from a behind and says lord <laughs> there was a comedian years ago he said uh trying to get into heaven is going to be like get, getting into a nightclub <laughs> jesus He's at, at, at the front door trying, trying to get in, you know. It, you know, you have to be prepared where he told you to be prepared at, okay. So, we don't have time for all this, oh, my spirit just says something else and all that. Hey, hey, save it, save it, save it, save it, save it. No one cares. Save it, save it. When he asked you to do something. Do it with excellence and be prepared. Be a visionary. Consider things. Uh, understand what it is you are trying to do, and let and let God give you ideas on how to be better prepared at it. Okay. When when God speaks to you, it's not coming at, 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 as as lightning and thunder all the time. No, He's going to speak to you through your consciousness. He's going to give you God ideas. As long as they, they don't conflict to to, to what's ha happening, what was currently happening or whatever, go for it. Okay, go for it. So when uh, they tried to gain a, a acknowledgement, like, Lord, I, I was faithful up to the point where I had to leave my post to get. He's like, I, I, I know you're not. In verse 13, it says, watch therefore, for ye know not neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. There goes that word again that I shared last week in Endgame. Watch. And watch, uh, 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 furnished by uh, my, my first pastor, uh, uh, is an acronym. The acronym for watch is because we are, we are dealing with end time prophecy. So the W stands for watch your ways. The A stands for watch your actions. Please uh, uh, jot, uh, jot this down. The A stands for watch your actions. The T stands for watch your tongue. The C stands for watch your, watch your conversations. Tongue and conversations are, are different. It's because conversations in this context refers to your lifestyle. Watch your lifestyle. And H stands for watch your habits. Okay. If you do these uh, things, you will be in good shape. Okay. Watch, therefore, for ye know not the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. In verse 14, and the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. He called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one. And every man according to, to his uh, several ability and straightway took his journey. Notice what's not there in verse 15. He gives them no instructions. In preparing for, for this, I want to accentuate the fact that in, in particular in this millennial generation and, and, and others, frankly, that you think God is going to take time and explain to you, give you a, a PowerPoint presentation on what it is you, you need to do or, on what it is your purpose is. I'm telling you now, he's not doing that. He, he's not doing that. 
the man in, in, in this uh, parable, he gave five talents to and one talent to every man according to his, his, his several ability, according to what the three of them can, can uh, do. He, he already knew. And then he followed, up, followed it up with, and straightway he left. <laughs> he left. They had no instructions on what to do with it. So what am I, 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 I getting at? What it is you are supposed to be doing in your life is instinctual. It's instinctual. You don't know. You have no real thing, but something is just pulling you towards getting getting a certain thing done. Again, as long as it isn't that bringing harm or, or, or bringing forth uh, conflict to, 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 to any other group or people, go for it. Go for it. Okay. In 16, and when, when he had received the five talents, went and traded with, with, with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, when he had received two, he had also gained other two. And he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid the Lord's money. So going back to, to your several ability, these are the uh, talents. How do your talents grow when you use them? God gives you the raw gift, but you have to manage it. What good is this teaching ability if I don't open my mouth? If I don't turn the camera on? If I don't post it? Because when you do your best, this is the only way your best can get better. By keep doing it. It also may, may, may be your assignment. Because... The, the, the definition of, of assignment is basically being who you already are. So when your assignment is teaching, when you teach, you are becoming more of yourself, which, which suggests you're getting better at it the more you go through it and, 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 and go through everything that, that goes along with it. Okay. Have you ever heard anybody sing or teach or preach or whatever, and you just clearly know that's not their first time doing it? That's why your assignment is so important because the Lord wants you to keep at it and keep doing it and keep perfecting it. Not 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 to continue to do the wrong things, <laughs> but continue to get better at it. Amen. Verse 19. And after a long time, the Lord of his servants, so so the, the Lord himself did, didn't, didn't return he, and reckoned with, with them. Not yet. And so he that had received the five talents came and brought other five, saying, Lord, thou deliver unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained uh, five beside beside them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, and thou and thou, thou shalt be faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter why, watch this. Enter thou into the joy of, of the Lord. The years that, that we have read, read that, we assume he's talking about heaven. He's not talking about heaven. There is a level of this life that will open up if you obey what it is God tells you to do and be excellent at it. Through trial and error, mess up, screw ups, but you per persevere. You will enter into the joy of of the Lord there is a whole dimension of life that's not even open to you yet because you haven't obeyed God I, I'm, I'm not just talking to you I'm talking to myself as well it's a whole level of life that hasn't opened up to you meaning once you get to the the, the doorway of the joy of the Lord You'll say, if I knew I would have done this sooner. I was texting my 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 my, uh, my, my pastor friend earlier today. Shout out, shout out to Steve, who was probably listening to this now. I'm uh, telling him about when Kevin Samuels was uh, telling uh, 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 Stephen is cold, uh, who's killing it right now uh, on, on his YouTube channel. Um, he's telling him, you know, I can give you some more tips on how on how to make your whole brand better on social media. If you do that, 
maybe in another 20 years, you, you'll be uh, able to uh, retire. And right now, stuff, stuff so cold is like 23. That means at 43, he can hang it up and go into his next career, whatever that is. Crazy. Crazy. In verse 22, he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou, thou deliver unto me two talents. Again, the Lord never told them what to do with it. It needs to be instinctual. So while you wasted three years sitting on your couch, not doing what it is God has put in your vicinity to do, what does, it, does that mean? Solve the closest problem near to you and watch where it leads you. Solve the closest problem to you. Solve it. Your instincts will lead you to the closest problem to you and watch your, your life just open up. Delivered unto me two, two talents, and behold, I have gained two other talents, but, but, but beside them. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, good, good and faithful servant. And thou hast been faithful over a, over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. This thing, this thing that, that your soul was crying out for is crying out for the joy of the Lord. That's what it's crying out for. You, you think it's just a, a promotion. The Lord told me maybe halfway through this year during COVID, he said, there is another side of glory that we're going to go into after the, 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 this COVID thing. I mean, the joy of the Lord shall be expanded on the earth after, after COVID. It will. It will. Because you think we're, we're just going through all this to, to go back to how life was before? No, 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 no. That's not happening. <laughs> That's not happening. We're taking everything we have learned along the way and we're going to excel. But he's, teach, he's giving this time to you to teach you how to be hungry. How to be hungry. Hungry means I'm not waiting for the waiter to bring me a menu. I will go back in the kitchen and start, start cooking. <laughs> Why? Because I'm hungry. When you're hungry, you don't wait for 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 someone to uh, 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 set you up. You can do something. All right. In verse 24, then he w w which had received the one talent came and said, "Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou has not sown and gathering where thou has not strawed." And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou has that is thine. And his Lord answered and said, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Wicked, slothful. So, so you're asking, how, I understand slothful, but how is he, he wicked? He's wicked is because you twisted what it is that God intended for you to do. He intended you to go right and you went left. He intended you to go east and you went went west. Twisted. Wicked. It comes from the word wicker. Which is a material which is easily twisted. In verse 27, thou art therefore have put my money to the exchangers just to get interest. Then at my coming I should receive my own my own with usury. Usually means interest. Yeah, all you got to do is have one percent more than what I originally gave you, and I would not be upset with you. That's still not a lesson for you to do the, the bare minimum. That's still not a lesson for you to do the, the bare minimum. Amen. Verse twenty-eight. Take therefore the talent from him and give it to unto him which has ten talents. So take your talent away from you because you and your inner dialogue with yourself, how you see all this to happen and give it to the most productive one. God wants you to be productive. You have to understand we are all children. All children are an investment. If you think it's your job to feed your, 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 your child, change them or whatever, and then 
then you notice how much of a jerk your, your child becomes is because they think it's all about them eating and being clothed and and going to the, the movies pre pre COVID. Okay, and shopping. It's like no, 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 no. No, the goal is to raise a godly seed for you to be a productive member of society. In short firm, I'm raising you right for you to be trustworthy to solve problems in your community through your gift. Yeah, through your gift or gifts. I know oh I, I know some kid is watching this like what? <laughs> Hmm, are you profitable? Every child, every serve, and every child is an investment. For every for unto everyone that has sh that has shall be given. And he that has abundance, but from him that has not shall be taken away, even that which he has. Verse 29 is really good. It's because verse 29 talks about a mentality. Not so, so much what specifically was done, but it's a mentality. For verse 29 again, for unto everyone that has shall be given. Why? Because they have. It shall be given. Because they have the, 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 the mentality of substance, they shall be given more substance. Why? Because they have the mentality of substance. This is how faith works. Because I faithed my healing, now the Lord has to give me my healing. Why? The healing didn't come once he gave it to me. The healing started once hope. I had hope for my, my healing. So hope is going to reproduce my faith that will reach out and grab it from eternity. So your 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 healing comes from eternity back to the time realm. So you were sick. Now you're healed because you had hope, which developed into faith. And it grabbed it from the eternal realm and brought it to your time realm into your manifestation. For unto everyone that has shall be given because you had it you had it before you got it <laughs> you had it before you got it so those who are hoping for something do you have it now because you got to have it now before you get it amen amen I'm, I'm sitting in something nice right now because i had it before i got it I got something pretty sitting outside because I had it before I got it. Yeah. And he shall have abundance. Why? Because he had, he had to have it and it shall be given. And that's how he gets abundance. Because you have to have it before you get it. And that's how you accumulate abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away. Because you don't have a hope for this, you don't have faith for this, more is going more is going to be taken away from you that you didn't even realize. Uh, e economists call it opportunity cost. You could have had this had you done this. But since you didn't have a mentality to have it, now it can't that now you're not eligible for it. Why? Because you didn't possess it. You didn't possess it. So it shall be taken away from you. What do you mean? The opportunity is now taken away from you. Because you didn't have it. See, when you work with the whole faith aspect of it, being in faith is going to require for you to uh, be embarrassed. Operating in faith is, is going to require for you to be embarrassed. So you you can't continue to uh, be in faith and be always concerned about your image. That's not how that works. <laughs> that's not how that works. Okay. No. That's that's not that's not necessarily necessarily how that works, y'all. <sighs> From him that has not shall be taken away, even that which he has. 
So he lost the opportunity to, to, to grow it. So what, take away what I gave him. Amen. And cash ye, cash ye the, the, the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, which is outside of the presence of God. And what and where is where where is where is the outside of the presence of God? Is where there should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And verse thirty one. And when when the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all His holy angels. How many angels does a God have? Well, according to the the book book, book of Jude, Jude saw thousands of thousands of angels. Pay uh, attention to that. He says in Jude, and I saw thousands of thousands. If you listen to that, that's no measurable amount of. Uh, that is that is a that is a infinite number, thousands of thousands. He didn't say ten thousand of ten thousand. I can quantify that, but thousands of thousands. That is an infinite number. And when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all his holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall, shall be gathered all nations. He shall se separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the uh, goat. I was thinking about the um, the uh, the crop and the uh, terry, the corn. And the uh, turn when Satan himself came into the, the vineyard, started planting bad seeds that'll choke the, the corn and for it. And and then the hu husband asked the, the owner of the land, should 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 we just take the turry out? He's like, no, 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 don't don't do it, because if you do it, you will run the risk of destroying the crop altogether. Let it grow up. And then in due season, it will be better to separate later. And here we are talking about a segregation based on character not Republican and, 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 a, and a Democrat but based on character he should separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep and the, the, the goats one has a certain personality and the other has uh, has a other personality and attributes Verse 33, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. And then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the, the world. Again, there, there it goes again, before, from the foundation of the world. That is that little clue that uh, the Godhead says that lets you know that this was already acted out in the eternity realm. We're just acting it out in time. So notice how when, when you're discouraged and, and, and you're praying to God, notice how, how, how excited that he's not. Why? Because he's seen it all before. And let me tell you, you're going to win. You're going to win. You don't see it right now, but you're going to win. Amen. In verse 35, for when I was hungry and you gave me meat, when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. Sorry. I was a stranger and you took me in, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. And then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when when saw we thee a hunger and fed thee, a thirsty and gave thee to drink? And when, when was thee a stranger and took thee in? Or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king, thank you. And the king answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as she has done it unto one of the least of these, ye have done it unto me. So God has described, disguised himself as the least of these. Your brother. Amen. Amen. Your brother. That it, your inconvenient brother. It is very in, in the convenient to be somewhere and, 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 and just see a homeless person struggling. That is very in, inconvenient. It, it also makes you uncomfortable. But this is what the Lord is saying. Throughout your lifetime, I was he. I was she. 
in verse 41, Then shall he say unto them that is on the left, Depart from thee, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for uh, the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you, you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in, naked, and you clothed me not, sick and in prison, and ye visit me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee hungered and a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee, then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, in so much as ye did it not to one of the what one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Amen. Amen. Kingdom segregation. There's going to come a time where God separates on different levels. On di different levels. Among those that are saved and in the church. Those who are uh, 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 con conducting in uh, the world's economy in terms of your gifts and talents. You're trying to keep it to yourself. You're, you're not. If you don't use it, it doesn't multiply. And then we you get to character in terms of the sheep and goat nations, nations, nations. <laughs> Amen. Let's end this in prayer, dear Heavenly Father. We, we we thank you for speaking through us, Lord, so so clearly and so vividly, Father. Let us take take a hard inventory on our character, Lord, and how we conduct uh, ourselves. Do we? Do we look upon our inconvenient brother and sister? What do we, how do we handle them? How do we think about them? How do we react to them? Do, are we using our gifts and talents the way that you have given them? You're, you're, you haven't given us a clear uh, direction on what to do with, with them, but you have still given us instinct. Dear Heavenly Father, are we visionaries, O oh God? To see what, what it is that is ahead of us and to take the uh, 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 appropriate materials and, and appropriate actions that, that it takes uh, to accomplish this uh, mission joyfully. Lord, let us take a hard inventory on ourselves because we want to be the best version of ourselves, the way that, that you will have us to be, O oh, 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 Heavenly Father. We ask you, Lord, to, to keep us throughout the week from all seen and, and unseen danger, Father. We uh, thank you for, for, for the price that you have paid, O oh Father. You, you have given your life that we may live and not just live just to pay bills and pay taxes, but to have an opportunity to enter into the joy of the Lord, which is another dimension of this life. In Jesus name, Father, may we experience it as we work on our integrity and in how to do hard work. Not just miracles, but hard work. We thank you, Lord. We will make you proud, O oh, oh, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Y'all have a blessed week. God bless. Bye.